there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and I am here today with my first book review for 2023. The book that I'm going to be reviewing is James McNair's Cheese Cookbook, and uh, I've owned this book for 20 years. This is the very first book in my collection about cheese, uh, and uh, on that basis, this book holds a sense of sentimental value. I bought this at Atlantic Books for $4.98. It was on special value. Uh, I was looking for a book about cheese, and I think my mother actually uh, came across this book. And this proved to be a labyrinth to me expanding my knowledge on different kinds of cheese and developing greater knowledge to the cheese that I was either familiar with or was just becoming familiar with. And this is the book that actually planted the seed to the argument that I make and that other cheese enthusiasts make about the originality of Swiss cheese. At Emmentaler is the original Swiss cheese. This is primarily a cookbook, but there are several anecdotes in here. Uh, James McNair talks about his experiences of uh, getting into cheese himself and becoming an enthusiast. He's written cookbooks on several topics and subjects. Uh, but uh, reading this, uh, you would think that cheese is his specialty. Yeah, and perhaps it's his one of many specialties but because right here he's also written about uh he's written cookbooks on bar and grill beef chicken uh, cold food cold pasta uh, pie pizza rice salmon squash very eclectic and if you're that whole argument that i make about the uh a theme ingredient he's doing it and he's really expanded on it during his writing career uh, because this was uh this was first released in 1986. the photos in here were taken by patricia brabant and she does an extraordinary job uh this here like this polenta with the da Italian fonduta. Quite something. And me being an enthusiast for pasta, this is quite extraordinary. Just about everything in here has was photographed. Uh, the only thing I didn't catch a photograph for is for either the croissants and cheese or... The cheese grit souffle, uh, because this here only shows one recipe. Uh, sometimes you'll find it on the next page, but on the next page you just see the bacon and cheese spoon bread. Uh, but I tried six recipes in this cookbook. I had I cooked and ate the gorgonzola wafers, the triple cream shortbread, the uh, tomato garlic cheese spread, the parmesan soup, the pizza with four cheese, and the pasta with four cheese. Uh, I would say that Overall, the one that really wowed me the most is the tomato garlic cheese spread uh, for what it was worth. I really did like the pasta with four cheese as well, uh, but the gorgonzola wafers, there was a bit of an accident, so I had to use Stilton, uh, but I think that either which way, I don't think the gorgonzola goes as well for my tastes in the form of a wafer. Uh, but 
The but it did go well in the other recipes that I used. Uh, the triple cream shortbread had a very it was a very it was very intriguing, but it wasn't like it wasn't rich per se. It, to me, it tasted a lot like uh, like goldfish crackers that you would eat from Pepperidge Farm. Uh, the the but as I was saying about the tomato garlic cheese spread, uh, you mix sun dried tomato with the juice that is in the uh, in within the sun dried tomato. The uh, you add garlic and you uh, and you add goat and it's the base is goat cheese and then you mix it and blend it together. Uh, it has the goat cheese texture, but the tomato, the sun-dried tomato, the juice within the sun-dried tomato and the garlic take over as far as the taste is concerned. The Parmesan soup, it really was very, it was very delightful, uh, but the basil pesto and the prosciutto that you put in, I think, really helped give it a standout taste. Because I do like the Parmesan base and the cream, uh, but when put into the form of a soup, Parmigiano Reggiano has a more subtle taste to it. The pizza we ended up having, I ended up using pizza dough rather than making it homemade. Uh, and we ended up only having one big pizza. And the pizza was, uh, the cheese that you used in that was uh, mozzarella, gorgonzola, parmigiano reggiano, and fontina. And mozzarella was... Uh, reliably good. Fontina, though, was a pleasant surprise. I didn't know how that would turn out, but I thought it lended itself well to the form of pizza. And uh, Parmigiano Reggiano was more like you would have on a cheesy bread. Uh, whereas the Gorgonzola, out of the four, was probably my least favorite, but it was still... It still did a, it was still a good cheese for the pizza, and I thought it was better than I expected. With the four cheese pasta, the gorgonzola was the standout cheese. Uh, that was made with Fontina, Provolone, and Parmigiano Reggiano, uh, which lended itself to the base and the texture and the flow. Uh, and you could taste it, but you especially tasted the gorgonzola more than anything. And that would be something I would be up to trying again, uh, because I do like my four cheese pasta or just a macaroni and cheese with multiple cheese. Quite a few recipes that I would like to try in here as well, uh, which includes the potato and cheese salad with chive dressing. I'd like to try the fried cheese because I'm very much an enthusiast for uh, mozzarella and carosa, which that's more like a, an Italian grilled cheese that you dip in sauce, kind of like you dip your grilled cheese in tomato soup. Uh, I'd like to try the Swiss cheese and potato soup at some point. Uh, the prosciutto and chicken camembert. Uh, the one that really, uh, that'll really have to work up to uh, because... I would like to try and cook a uh, a meat dish, and this is going to be uh, something to uh, accomplish, and that is Gruyere stuffed beef fillet. Once I get into cooking 
meat dishes of that nature. I would. Uh, that does sound like it's very appetizing, but I probably would be safe to have one serving. And then there were some good desserts, too, that I would like to try. Uh, the cheesecake squares with lemon curd, and the one that I was planning to do probably soonest is the mascarpone and fresh fruit ice cream, where you blend in the mascarpone with a uh, with a designated fruit. I think the one that was mentioned in here was mango, but you can use uh, other, you can use the, you can use either bananas, figs, nectarines, peaches, strawberries, uh, raspberries. Sounds very refreshing, and I would be inclined to to give it an attempt. This cheese cookbook was very easy to follow and very easy to be engaged in. I'm really happy that I started dipping into this and it's made for some good meals and for some good sides or accompaniments. I think part of my rating, which I'm giving this five stars, stems from sediment and that this was a very important and impactful book to my enthusiasm for cheese and me getting into cooking with cheese. I'm reviewing and rating this now because this is the year I really engaged in a close reading into this. Uh, but I would argue that this is a great entryway for anybody. I think that it provides you with just enough information that you need as far as learning about the different kinds of cheese is concerned. You learn about the different types of cheese. They're split into four major categories, which is soft, semi-soft, firm, and hard, and then subcategories within them, such as fresh, ripe, blue, uh, triple cream, uh, Swiss type. Uh, and you get, in addition to each kind of cheese, you get the, uh, McNair makes mention to what kind of milk it comes from, what country it comes from, and a general overview of the taste and the aroma and whatnot. And McNair will also add a little bit of uh, information about them, uh, such as if he really, uh, if he really likes a particular cheese. Uh, Parmigiano Reggiano is his favorite. Uh, he does also like Gorgonzola. He views that as the uh, as his favorite blue cheese. He does like Jarlsberg, even though. He has made mention to the fact that there are a lot of cheese that's based off of Swiss cheese that is not as good, uh, but Jarlsberg is often viewed as the best as far as the Swiss type cheese is concerned. Uh, and by that, I mean the one that uses the P. Uh, bacteria that causes it to develop the eyes. Uh, not necessarily the other Swiss type cheese that he does list, such as Gruyere and App Appenzeller and uh, Racolat. Uh, but because while they are Swiss type, there's not as much of, they don't really have the overwhelming eyes that you find in an Emmental or Jarlsberg. James McNair's Cheese Cookbook is a cookbook that I highly recommend. I think that this is a great place for uh, people that are looking to get into cheese, get into cooking with cheese. Uh, it's just worth having in your collection because you're going to find some nice recipes in here. And McNair does a great job incorporating uh, an anecdotal approach to uh, 
quite a few of these recipes. And I'm definitely going to continue uh, dipping in and out of this and cooking more recipes within this. I want to thank you for tuning into this video. I hope you check out some more videos from our channel. We have a lot in store for 2023. And I have a lot of book reviews and other videos that are up and coming. If you really like what you see on this channel, please support us on our Patreon for the money that we make will allow us to provide you, the viewer, with even more great content. For now, keep reading.